There are people you do not want to upset in the world. The politically disenfranchised who, who feel that they have nothing to lose. Those who feel that the time has come for revolution. Then out on the edges beyond any of those are, are science fiction and fantasy fans whose favorite show has been canceled in an untimely way. Firefly was canceled by Fox in 2003 after less than one season on air. Making tribute movies is one way fans have tried to cope. Others vent at Fox on YouTube. Fox, why is it that you seem to purposefully psychologically damage all of those who love Firefly? And many more engage in countless other gestures of support. I wanted to put something on my door, as I often do, that says this is something that I'm with or I'm behind. Jim Miller is a professor of theater and speech at the University of Wisconsin, Stout. One day, he decided to display a Firefly poster outside his office. It's from the pilot episode of the show. One character is worried that this captain might harm him. Uh, I'm trying to put this as delicately as I can. How do I know you won't kill me in my sleep? You don't know me, son, so... Let me explain this to you once. If I ever kill you, you'll be awake. You'll be facing me, and you'll be armed. I posted it on Monday, and on Friday, I received an email from Police Chief Walters, the parking officer and, and chief of police of, of Stout's campus, saying, we have removed that poster. The chief wrote that it is unacceptable to have postings that refer to killing, and suggested passers-by might worry that Miller would kill them. Uh, no, this is so other side of the coin from any of that. It was the statement of this character who so eloquently says, I play fair. I will not sneak up on you. I will not bushwhack you. I will not ambush you. But the police chief didn't back down. In fact, she warned Miller that if he tried anything like that again, he could face criminal charges. I had said in my email, stop acting this way. This is the way that fascists act. So Miller put up a second poster. They tore that down and said I was a second offender violent threat on campus. At this point, Miller feared for his job, so he contacted FIRE, the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. It was so obvious that these two posters were a threat to no one. Greg Lukianoff is president of FIRE, and for him, there was more to the case than defending free speech. I am a huge fan of Firefly. This is a fertile land and we will thrive. Fans of Firefly will appreciate this t-shirt. It actually incorporates a quote from the pilot. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. When I found out about this case and realized that this was an utter violation of Professor uh, Miller's uh, constitutional rights and realized it was also a case about Firefly, I could hardly believe that these two areas of my life were, were, were in the same space for a second there. What the police chief said in the first email to me was that First Amendment is not an issue here. She argued the posters constituted a threat and thus were not protected by the First Amendment. The, the definition of threats, as far as the law is concerned, is placing, uh, is placing someone um, in fear of bodily harm or death, and something that would place a reasonable person in, in, in that fear. Nothing about these posters meet that standard. And by watering down the definition so much, you, you, you give a free hand to any administrator to, again, shut down any speech they dislike. Lukianov says there's another danger to watering down the definition of threat. These are deadly serious allegations. These are the kind of allegations that could have ruined this professor's career. Fire sent the university a letter. It gave them the chance to back down, explaining that this wasn't even a close call as far as the First Amendment was concerned. Chancellor Charles Sorensen defended the university's response, saying this was not an act of censorship. This was an act of sensitivity, intended to maintain a campus climate in which everyone can feel welcome, safe, and secure. I knew they were utterly underestimating the power of the fans of Firefly. Fire also contacted the Board of Regents, but even that didn't make a difference. So, Lukianoff took to his computer to spread the word. He wrote an article for the Huffington Post, another for the Daily Caller, and Fire launched an all-out media blitz. This got on Gawker, this was on Reason. And they're tweeting and retweeting and posting things. Nathan Fillion, who's from the show, uh, who played the actual character who said the quote. Adam Baldwin, who was from Firefly. And then a legendary author threw his support behind the cause. When Neil Gaiman tweeted about this case to his 1.6 million Twitter followers, it was a game changer. 
I think really the power of social media is one of immediacy. Many companies, many establishments, um, many areas of authority fail to see just how fast information can get out these days. Gaiman was outraged by the case and tweeted about it before he realized that he knew the man at the center of the controversy. I cannot possibly imagine uh, anybody viewing a Firefly poster on the wall of Jim Miller's office and concluding from that that he is um, about to, to go postal. He's a theater geek. He's an incredibly nice man. He's an artist. I think what, what's disappointing is that the university administration backed their, their police officer rather than quietly taking her aside and pointing out that she had done something that was um, stupid, wrong, and that would embarrass all of them. And after receiving so many letters um, and, and, and so much uh, bad press, the university finally decided to back down. This isn't a story about me and, boy, uh, you know, blue meanies are coming after an individual. But the larger story is the important one. Something that really strikes me about this case is one of the reasons why we won it is because the case had a built-in constituency of fans of the show Firefly. But what's heartbreaking about this is we deal with hundreds and hundreds of cases like this that don't have a constituency. And you'd think and you'd hope that there was a constituency out there just for free speech. I think free speech on campus has to be important because the currency of a university is ideas. What they need to be, be doing is creating an environment that's safe for people to disagree, that's safe for them to be wrong, that's safe for them to question authority, that's safe for them to be able to say outrageous things and have those arguments that we desperately need to have. Because if they're not happening on our universities, they're not happening anywhere.